Hello, and welcome back to the PC Summit. I'm A.M. Gerbelny, Solutions Architect here at AWS. I'm joined by my co-host, Chad, and our hey. guest, Joel. Chad, tell us about yourself, please. <laughs> hey, I'm Chad Lacey. I'm a global sales strategist at AWS, and excited to have Joel here talk about Wicker with us. Yeah, Joel, well, who are you? What are you here for? Well, coincidentally, I'm also excited to be here I guess I'm not really there at the summit. I'm uh, back in California doing the COVID thing, but um, I'm happy to be there in spirit at least. So I'm the general manager of Wicker. Uh, Wicker was recently acquired by Amazon. Um, and so we're folding in and we're bringing end-to-end -end encryption out to Amazon customers worldwide. That's super exciting. So Joel, just give us an idea, who is Wicker for? It's a great question. I mean, I think it's easy to say for everybody but I'll get a little more specific than that. I think that would be helpful probably. So um, Wicker is an end-to-end -end encrypted product. And when, you know, around 2017, we decided we wanted to build something for the enterprise. So I think the fast, easy answer, Chad, is anybody in an enterprise setting that needs real strong data protection, uh, that's, that's what Wicker is all about. Um, to date, it's all about communication. So anyone who needs to transfer files, have pers you know, one-to-one -to -one -to -one communication, one-to-one-to-many -one -to -one -to communication. Um, a great way to think of it is one of our customers said the other day, it's like Wicker is uh, Slack and Zoom had a security baby. So we're, we're kind of building a product that does all of the things, and there are certain circumstances when those things need to be protected differently. That's awesome. Yeah, so secure communications, You've mentioned this term already. End-to-end -end encryption is what Wicker is all about. What is that? What is end-to-end -end encryption? How is that accomplished in Wicker? Okay, great question. And so this is different, right? Like um, traditionally in compute, we have the centralized server that's the you know the source of all knowledge. From an attacker standpoint, it's the basket with all the eggs, right? And so. Um, you know, a bunch of us in the security industry started using this technology called end-to-end -end encryption. And actually, even before that, we'd use other kind of encryption techniques like PGP. I think that'll resonate with probably a lot of people out there to make sure that when we were sending, you know, trade secrets, critical information, it was protected differently. And what that meant was essentially the encryption didn't happen in that centralized server. It happens out on the end, on the end point or out at the edge. So... And the cool thing that happened in the industry is around 2014, we started to carry around pocket computers. You know, we had these smartphones that could do the, the math and the processes out at the edge, which really eliminated this one really significant, what we call person in the middle um, vulnerability where people try and attack that centralized server. It basically, instead of doing all the key exchange and management centrally, it does it out on the different nodes. And so that just provides you know, it eliminates, I guess I should say, not provides, eliminates a really significant attack surface. Uh, the first way we saw that was in, you know, consumer messaging products like Wicker or say like WhatsApp or Signal. Those types of products created this just for, you know, consumer messaging. So you could be, you could have private conversations, but it still holds that end-to-end -end encryption can be used in a lot of different modalities. And in this case, we're building it for the enterprise. I don't think Chad liked that end encryption. He just left us. <laughs> That's okay. I think maybe uh, Chad's actually going to sign up for Wicker right now. Because I bet he is. I'm so he is. excited about it. Um, that that's, I mean, yes, end encryption is, uh, and traditionally, you know, like you said, it's been difficult, not just because of the centralized location, I would assume, also because it's, it's compute intensive to uh, actually encrypt something, right? So having the devices that we do now actually do the encryption uh, kind of alleviate some of that compute. Uh, what other roles did the devices play in, in, in encryption when working with Wicker? So an iPhone, Android phone, sure. et cetera. Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, a, a way to think of this is you have a node. And so Wicker works across all the different operating systems. So you mentioned iOS and Android. That obviously makes sense. But, you know, it's also on desktops so Windows, Linux, you know, Mac OS X, et cetera. Um, when I'm sending a message, let's say, let's say even more specifically, I'm sending a file. There's a key generated on send. And there's still a server. It's just kind of a dumb router, right? It just, it just processes that out to the, to the other edges. 
you know, with us, we can have like 500 people in a room. And so that it, that kind of compute intensive, you know, modality you're talking about is there's a new key generated on all 500 of those nodes, right, for, on, the, on the receive. And the reason it's safe is that if you kill that key material, you know, every single packet, every single exchange generates a new key. Um, and so it's very, it's very unique. And that was a very hard thing to do in, say, like the late 90s. I mean, you couldn't do it. You needed a building, right? And now we carry buildings in our pockets. So that's, that's essentially what's happened here. And so it provides a, a very, very different level of privacy and security for that data transport, um, mainly because you're generating new key material on every message, every send, every receive. Yeah, and that's, that's one of the questions I think we were going to ask, too. Uh, I also wanted to comment a little bit back. You said uh, that centralized server, uh, server is like a basket of ed, eggs, like the attackers are foxes or something. It's <laughs> just yeah. something I really yeah, yeah. I love that analogy. But uh, so you just mentioned on every message, every session, every file, they're all encrypted. What, what's the wicker me method of encrypting end to end do you do it for every message what about video conferencing or files like we we're talking about well it was, it was pretty interesting because when we started this again the industry started this as and i think this is kind of traditional compute you do something new and then you, you use it for communication first right like you know you're kind of sending a packet there's this kind of synac modality on, in, in building um <clears throat> so when we started putting you know, this product into the enterprise or more specifically when we started going to customers and asking them do you need is there anything in your enterprise that needs end-to-end -end encryption like are there things that need to be treated differently and the answer was yes and then they said we need video conferencing and that's you know it's a you know what is that what's the packet there when you're when you're generating a key like what essentially is that transport so we had to wrestle with that. Um, we had our own, we kind of built our own um, NPL stack essentially for video conferencing. But what we do there is we we end to end encrypt the session. So it's not like every syllable gets its own key. You know, like honestly, your thought process goes to that. Like, how are we going to do this? Um, so it's more like we're we're encrypting that session with all the different groups with that unique key. So you can still do a call with like seventy people. And you're doing that ex that key exchange, and you're creating that non-person in the middle attackable session for the phone call or for the conference, whatever the case may be. But it is a little it's it's a little different in doing end-to-end -end encryption and something we call perfect forward and backward secrecy, which is that key exchange I was talking about. Um, that's a little different on video conferencing, just because it's there are different kinds of packets. Yeah. Yeah, and so is the, the cryptography that Wicker's using, is that publicly documented so I can review how these messages are being encrypted? 100%. I mean, I, I think, um, you know, that happened pretty rapidly when I got here. That was one of the first things we decided to do because I think, you know, the beauty of this is that you don't have to trust us. You know, it's math. Um, I think exposing the math for any product like this, whether it's a consumer one or what we're doing at Wicker, you know, I'm a strong advocate of the transparency around the crypto. Um, it's it's kind of the coolness of almost crowdsourcing trust, right? Like, I want all the world's best cryptographers to see our crypto. And if if anyone finds a problem with it, then we fix it. You know, that hasn't happened to date. Um, we don't really expect it to because because of the publishing of it and because of all the peer review and because of the openness of it. Yeah, trust but verify, right? I mean, that's yeah. uh, that's what you should actually uh, set out to do. Well, you, 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 you don't really necessarily, you can trust uh, any company, but you should be able to go uh, reference their cryptography. So I, I, I love that you all have it open. And yeah, it, it, and I think it's, it's different. I mean, there are definitely products, you know, like Verb, there are things you can build where, you know, you are doing things and it, there's some security in keeping it not public, right? Like that, that exists in the world for sure. Um, but when it comes to just math, like, you know, one plus one equals two, you, you know, you, if everybody can agree on that one thing and it doesn't actually impact the customer at all, I think that's the, the key here. And that's how, that's how this works. That's how this end-to-end -end encryption work is, works is it doesn't, 
do anything to lessen the you know the security posture of the customer for this to be public. In fact, it increases it, I would argue. Yeah, definitely increases. So we talked a lot about who Wicker is for and what Wicker does. What is Wicker not? What what shouldn't I think of when I think Wicker? Well, I mean, sometimes because we have this collaboration product, people think, uh, are you asking me to rip out all my collaboration products? You know, and it's and that's not the case. Um, you know, so good examples are, well, there's a great example at the summit right now that I'll talk about here in a second. But, you know, one of our, one of our customers said, um, you know, we have rules. Whenever we process this type of data, we never do it in email. We never do it in anything but Wicker. And so you actually get a little bit of an OPSEC benefit there too, because if somebody were to say like, hey, boss, I want to see the payroll information, or hey, boss, let's transfer those funds over, and they, and they ask it in that, that other channel that's not Wicker. Beyond it just being in Wicker and being safe from adversaries, it, you also get this you know, sort of institutional knowledge that we don't conduct, we don't conduct that kind of business in, um, in other tools. A really good example of that would be like political campaigns. Often we'll use Wicker just for you know, polling data, opposition research, certain things that are just trade secret mission critical that can't sort of fall into the wrong hands. You know, if they're going to send an email saying, let's go get lunch at the Mexican restaurant, that's cool. Like that, that probably doesn't matter as much. So, um, you know, there are definitely privacy people who think everything should always be end-to-end -end encrypted. And quite honestly, I think we'll get there at some point in time. But right now, I, a lot of our customers use it alongside their existing uh, tools for things like incident response, crisis management, um, you know, any workflow that is, is sensitive and, and critical. I have to applaud your choice for lunch, too, Joel. That's yeah. a solid, yeah. solid lunch choice. <laughs> <laughs> so, Joel, tell us, how is uh, Wicker distributed? How can people get their hands on? So, like a lot of things, um, you know, pre-acquisition, it was the app store. You know, we would push configs out for our, so we have a we have a SaaS product and we have a self-hosted product. So for those, you know, we call Wicker Enterprise, not a big company enterprise, but the product SKU is actually called Wicker Enterprise. That's the self-hosted version. You know, that's that's the, the customer's software distribution process. Um, we help push out those configs and manage that process for them. Otherwise, um, you know, you bring up a really good point because enterprise software isn't typically something that's that's you know an app store distribution model. So a lot of our customers, however, start there. They'll go there, they'll do a proof of concept, they'll spin up like 30 people to understand the product, and then they'll say, like, how do I how do I go get the administrative capabilities I need? So that's the thing. You know, we'll show this later on if we have time, maybe in some demo. Um but you can do it, you know, you can administratively deploy this out to thousands of people. You can provision, you can deprovision, you can hook into OIDC processes, whatever, you know, it, when we built this, we essentially said, what we can't do is, is mandate how this is distributed to employees. We have to accommodate the customer's software distribution model. So we yeah. really kind of hooked into just all those processes to make it fast and easy to get out there to, to employees. So Joel, you said one of my mini wake words, um, which is demo. Uh, oh, that there's a demo. Yeah, uh, yeah so I can. Yeah, let's let's check it out. Maybe maybe when we do this demo, we'll just jump right into the the product. Hey, that's even better. Fast into the product, my favorite type of thing. Okay, so we can see your screen now, Joel. Take us take us there. So. You're looking at the product right now, and this is what the end user sees. Okay, this is what I would expect for sure out of a chat app. Okay, so I'm gonna take you into the product. I'm gonna start with the user interface. Um, this is you know, a lot like other communication products or collaboration products, that's intentional. We don't wanna make it too different or too confusing for the end user. I wanna have in to this relearn case, everything, right? <laughs> Yeah, exactly, exactly. And so you can see you can do direct messages. I think, you know, the room function is really the thing that is um, most used by our, well, I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of one-on-one -on -one messages. You know, we get that type of telemetry back, but people are creating secure rooms for things like, you know, mergers, acquisitions, incident response, et cetera. 
So, you know, it's got all the things you see, you know, like you can do emojis and it's funny, like one of our, our most um, kind of, I don't know, sensitive customers, when we asked them what feature they wanted us to expand upon the most, you would think it'd be encryption, but they wanted more custom emojis. It's just how people work. I want um, my emoji in to end yeah, encrypted as well. Right. Also. I mean, that's, here's that's another, very important to me. Yeah, it's 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 interesting. It's just the way people work, right? Like, so here's a, there are a couple other things in there. Voice memo, you can see, like you, that's an accessibility feature that we have, so that if you're kind of out running around, you can send a voice message. That's used a ton. It's probably our fastest um, growing feature in terms of usage. And then, you know, it's one of the things that's very interesting about end-to-end -end encryption is people think about it like strictly in terms of privacy. But you can see in this demo, we're sharing our location, which seems like not a privacy feature, but our customers need that because there are a lot of them are downrange and they have people out in hostile environments. And so as an administrator, you can either turn this on or turn it off. But, um, you know, that, that shows you like, I could own this product for a big company and say, I never ever want anyone to share their location or you can enable it so that you can. That's super useful. Yeah, you mentioned uh, you mentioned deal rooms and for like mergers and acquisitions. Definitely a use case that I thought of when I when I heard about Wicker. Maybe uh, later on too, we can talk about some other things that you've seen Wicker get used for. Sure, sure. Um, it, this does have presenter mode, which you can see is being highlighted here. You can also see that, like, the you, you know, again, you start a call and you test your speakers. It does all of those things. And so um, I, the presenter mode is more when you want to make sure that nobody can come off mute when you're talking to, like, 100 people, you know. And, um, again, it's, it's interesting because that's not necessarily – you think about privacy in hundreds of people. That can be hard, but that's how our customers use it. So now we've gotten into the, the network – dashboard. Um, this is how, this is what's really different. If you go to the app store and you bought or buy, or you download a consumer and then encryption application, you can't like very simply provision it or deprovision it. So here you can see like, you know, if one of these employees or one of these people um, leaves the organization, or like we just talked about, you're in a deal room and in the middle of the deal, they go um, work for a competing bank or something. If you're doing this on consumer products, they're just still around. Like there's no real controls around this. Um, you can, you know, in Wicker, what we built are these administrative controls so that that's not the case. This this is where you can limit some of the, the uh, functionality. This federation here is probably the most important thing to highlight because with Wicker, you can set this up as an administrator to have it be an internal only product that's the end of the demo or you can um set it up so that you can talk to customers or external parties so you know in say like a federal setting um our customers use it for like missions if you will you know they'll 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 federate across the different wicker instances so they'll have their own wicker instance Another customer will have a Wicker instance, and maybe some of the allies, if you will, will go get the free Wicker consumer product. And all of those different products and people can be brought into the construct of a room, and they can do their work. And when the work is done, you can destroy that room, and it's just gone. So you're not, you're not bringing all these people into your network. You can essentially create temporary networks. Now, yeah, I, I use, go ahead. No, I was saying that I think that's super cool. That's a, I can see a real big use case, especially when you talk about mergers and acquisitions, you kind of need to set up a clean room and a place where you can, can talk about some of these proceedings and documents share and everything else, and then be able to tear it back down in case it doesn't go through. Yeah. So I use the word destroy, and I think that's a really important thing to bring up here. Um, end to end encryption is typically, because I talked about that, that key exchange, especially the products, which are few that do this perfect forward, backward secrecy. If you kill that key material, you've essentially destroyed any and all um, 
I don't know, existence of the packets that were being transferred, whether that's files or communications, et cetera, right? And so you, I, you know, I just gave you a little view into the, the management console because, you know, when we started this process, we're like, you're going to have to be able to distribute the software out and control that. That's just what enterprise software is. But we also knew that there was going to be some need for compliance and, and data retention as well. So we do also have a compliance module. So it's, you know, this concept of destroy is what people think about with end-to-end -end encryption, but we also retain, and it's, you know, immutable logging to, if, we, if you run the compliance module, you have really, really, really good data retention if you have something like a litigation hold that's, that requires it, or even just a regulatory requirement. You can configure it so, you know, you keep things as long as you want on the clients, but you can also have a compliance server so that you retain things if you want. The one thing that's maintained that is really, in my opinion, you know, the heart and soul of what is end-to-end -end encryption is that the customer gets to retain that on their own terms. AWS and Wicker can never, ever touch anything. Like, we just provide data transport that's completely secure. Retention is on the customer. It's not on, it's not on us. That's awesome, Joel. We're uh, nearing the end of our time together. I've, I've truly appreciated the time that you've, you've given us. Uh, anything you'd like to say to wrap us up? Any, anything that you'd like the audience to, to go do or know about? Um, I think maybe there was a mention of a botathon too. That, exactly. Uh, that we'll yeah. Talk about. So, um, you know, depending upon when you see this, if it's if it's Monday, you can still register for for our botathon, and this is a really important thing to just talk about in general. I think so. We we have this concept. The other the other kind of third principle. It was you know management. It was compliance, and then there was this extensibility where the things we wanted to build for the enterprise, and so we give our customers the ability to build end to end encrypted workflows on top of Wicker, and so some of the cool things that we've seen are. You know, a Western democracy during the pandemic actually built a voting bot. So they had members doing real legal remote voting on our product. Um, one of our partners, Deloitte, helped, you know, without, without us really being involved, they found a customer need and they built a telehealth application so that people can be out doing sort of healthcare out in um, austere environments, if you will. Um, we hooked into the Snowball line of products at AWS, and we're in the Ukraine helping people with, you know, humanitarian missions. Um, there's there's this huge, you know, there's a there's actually just like workflow automation, and people use this obviously for like, imagine how you could plug into PagerDuty or Slack to do incident response workflows, right? All those types of things. Um, so we have like, I don't know, I think last I saw like 150 people who are gathering in DC to just build things on top of Wicker. And we'll continue to have these botathons. So if you if you see this early enough to get on board for the D, for the DC summit, come build things with us. Um, if not, then we'll be doing this at reInvent. We'll be doing it at other summits. You know, we want to we want to really like flex this muscle of we don't know every single use case for end-to-end -end encryption in the enterprise. We want to give the enterprise the ability to build the things that matter most to them. And um, and I think that's just super exciting. And I think that's um, that's kind of the future of end to end encryption in the enterprise. No, I agree with you. I think that's super exciting. I really appreciate you taking time out to show us Wicker and talk to us about it and how you're really revolutionizing the way companies can come together and and share information in an encrypted and safe environment. I think it's 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 a huge step forward. So thank you. Yeah, we're we're obviously incredibly excited about this. If anybody wants more information, I'm sure that. We're going to provide all that information. Please don't hesitate to reach out. Great. All right. Thanks so much, Thanks. Joel.